me, too. Oh, no. No, dear. You play what you have. All right. Well, thank you, Mr. Dante. Hey, Willie. You want to play for me? Don't be silly, Sam. What would I do with you if I won you? Have fun. Same shooter now. Let's shoot him in. That with him. Better go. Well, good evening, Mr. Dante. Well, good evening. Good evening. You winning? Oh, so so. I'm trying to work out a new system. I'm betting on my telephone number. Well, that sounds interesting. Oh, it is. First, I bet on five, then three, two, one, and then five again. Five, three, two, one, five. Well, that's easy enough to remember. I call it the Oakwood system. That's the prefix. Oakwood five, three, two, one, five. Good. Simple. Yes. I'll have to try your system sometime. Fine, any time. Yeah, have fun. Five. Five. Evening, Willie. How's it going, Ed? Slow at first. It's picking up, though. Here's the figure. Excuse me, Mr. Dandy. Well, well, Mrs. Raymond. Nice seeing you again. We've missed you the last couple of months. Have you, Willie? But of course you have. I'm a good customer. Well, a good customer who's beautiful is always missed. Supposing I weren't such a good customer, Willie, would you still miss me? Go on, flatter me. I've lost a lot tonight. Sorry, dear. Only flatter the winners. That's so they come back tomorrow night and lose what they won. Well, the least you can do is give me a chance to recoup. Can I cash an IOU? Oh, any time. Yes, give me a tab, will you? Funny, you know, before I went to Miami, I won a little, lost a little. That trip south seems to have changed my luck. And it's all bad. Five thousand? Oh, certainly, yes, at a time. Did you enjoy your Miami vacation? It was an expensive tan. Honor Mrs. Raymond's I owe you, Ed. Hope you don't need any more, dear. Good luck. Thanks. If I should lose again, though, a nice, quiet drink in your office would be very consoling. Anytime. Bring along your husband. We'll all have a drink. He never comes here. I know. You always play such a safe game, Mr. Daddy. Your chips are waiting, Mrs. Raymond. Sleep your mind. Winner in the field. Oh, he said that's nice. Don't fight. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Yes, sir. What'll it be? Uh, I'd like to see the boss. Oh, you're sorry. He's busy right now. Oh, back room? What back room? Okay, okay. But I'm not a cop. Believe me. We had a nice old grandmother type in here one night. I believed her. Turned out to be the oldest policewoman on the force. I understand. But look, Willie knows me. We were in the army together. He wouldn't mind my just dropping back to say hello. Huh? Nobody goes in the back room without an okay. Now, uh, be a nice guy and sit down, huh? Okay. But Willie isn't going to like the way I'm being treated. Why don't you go tell him to fire me? There he is now. At ease, Lieutenant. Hmm? Edwards. Hank Edwards? I was in your outfit. Oh, hi, Edwards. Sit down. To be honest, Mr. Daddy, you don't remember me, do you? Well, your face is familiar, but there were a lot of guys in my outfit. I sure remember you, boy. I was AWOL once, and boy, did you ever chew me out. <laughs> I probably had a new uniform. You live in town? I do now. Tell the truth, my luck's been pretty bad the last couple of years. I've moved around from place to place, just can't seem to get started. Well, that's too bad. Can you get a cup? No, he's young. Let him keep his health for a while. <laughs> I, uh, I'd like to ask a favor. Sure, how much you need? No, no, I don't want a loan. I, well, I'd like a job. Here? Yeah, I know about your back room, Mr. Daddy, and I've dealt a pretty sharp game in my time. I won't lose you any money. Well, you're right about the back room, but you're wrong about the operation. We don't have any sharp games. That boy's been with me a long time. Sorry, no openings. Look, I'll do anything. If you've got a restaurant here, I'll even wash dishes. Mm, you must be desperate. Have a wait table? I've done everything. I don't care about that. Do you have a wait table? Sure. OK, I'll give you a crack at it. Regular man's on vacation. If you work out, I'll keep you on when he gets back. 6 o'clock tomorrow night. Thanks, Mr. Daddy. I'll be right here on time. OK, Edwards. Do more of the same. Two scotch on the rocks. Two scotch on the rocks. Come on, snap it up, will you? Look, Sonny, you get the tips for the speedy service, I get the ulcers. Relax, will you? Just trying to do a good job. 
Oh, evening, Mr. Patty. Uh, how's it going, Hank? So far, so good. How's he doing? Oh, he's a regular speed demon. Next thing you know, he'll be wearing track shoes. We could stand a little speed around here. You're asleep on your feet all the time. Pick it up, will you? Yeah? No, he just came in. Back room. Yes, Ed? Oh, how much? Hmm. No, 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 you did right. Ask her to come to my office, will you? Yeah, right away. Send some coffee to my office. I want to suffer in private. I understand you want to see me, Willie. Business or pleasure? It's always a pleasure to see you, Mrs. Raymond, even on business. Come see. Thank you. Cigarette? No, thanks. Let's get to the point, Willie. I went to cash another IOU and your man called you. I take it my credit's being cut off. Well, <laughs> just temporarily for your own good. Let's see. Last night you dropped uh, 10,000. Tonight you dropped another 10. That's a lot of money. You don't think my notes are any good? Oh, I didn't mean that. That's, uh, let's look at it this way. Before you went to Miami on your vacation, you didn't lose too much. Now, in two nights, you dropped 20,000. Your luck's turned bad. Why bucket and lose more? Isn't how I play my business? Entirely, yes. Just that when I can, I try to keep my customers from getting hurt. Why don't you stay away from the game for a while and try it again next week? All right, Willie. So ends our business discussion. Are you sure that's the only reason you wanted to see me? I'm afraid it is. You're afraid, but I'm not. Relax, Willie. I'm uh, sorry, Mrs. Raymond, but you're still a bad credit risk. Gee, I, I'm sorry, I... Uh... Good night, Mr. Dante. I didn't know you were. No, that's I mean... all right, it's all right. But next time you come into my office, knock on the door. Put it down there. They're still hurting them out of the back room. Hey, you drank it all. Mm hmm Now I know how it feels to be embalmed. Kills you. There's a guy outside who wants to see you. Who? I don't know. He had a couple of drinks at the bar, and he acts like he had a lot more before he came. What does he look like? Oh, he's an old codger. Too old to be drinking that much. Want me to tell him you left? No, it's all right. I'll see him. I'm coming. Okay. <sighs> Mr. Willie Daddy. Better have a chair, Fred. You look like you need one. Don't call me a friend. You know who I am. No. No, you don't know. If you did, you wouldn't have let me in. You got me. The name is Raymond. You're getting scared, huh? Terrified. Try Smith. That makes me shiver, too. I'm Rita Raymond's husband. Oh, well, how are you? Thought you'd get away with it, didn't you? Well, you're going to get what you deserve, Daddy. I uh, haven't the slightest idea what you're talking about, Mr. Raymond. I think you ought to calm down a little. You can't make me shut up. I don't care who hears me. Now, look, look, this office is soundproof. All your yelling and screaming isn't going to disturb anybody but you. So go ahead, sit down. I told you you're going to get what you deserved. Now you sit down. Put that thing away, you're drunk. I'm sober enough to take care of you. You get my wife in debt here. Then you blackmail her. Now I'm going to settle the score. Are you crazy? What are you talking about? She told me all about it. About your threats to tell me. Oh, you're out of your head. There's only one way to deal with your kind, Daddy. I've had enough of this, Raymond. Put that thing away and get out of here, and I'll talk to you when you're sober. You're not going to talk to anyone any time, Daddy. All right. 
All right, Raymond, have it your way. I, uh, at least I think you'll let me explain a few things. I feel that maybe we could talk this out. I don't need you talking out. My wife told me everything. You disgraced her. Now you're going to pay for it. You stay right here. Here? Right here. I don't let anybody in my office until the police get here. Please. Now, Hank, don't ask any questions, will you? I I'm going to need all my answers for Lieutenant Waldo. be lucky to pull through. I hated to do it, but there was no other way. So you said before. Care to give me the fairy tale again, Daddy? No, I don't. I'll wait for Lieutenant Waldo. Lieutenant Waldo's out of town testifying on a case. He'll be gone a week. Oh, great. So that puts me in charge of the case. Good old Lieutenant Ritchie of the Hatchet Squad. Shave my head and split my pant leg. You know, we just might. Well, before you pull the switch, old boy, you better read up on your law, especially that part about self-defense. Oh, yeah. You did say he fired at you first. How many times would you say he fired at you before you shot him? Oh, well, three or four at a time like that who keeps score. Care to show me in your office just how it happened? How can I refuse? You have such a winning smile. Get him out of here. It's a private office. All right, Dandy. Now you say Raymond was standing about here, huh? That's right. Raymond was standing right there, and I was over there behind the desk. And he fired four times at you? That's right. Then when did he swallow the gun? Oh, you never could tell a good joke. The gun, Dandy. The gun this man was supposed to have fired at you with. Where is it? Well, how would I know? The last time I saw it was right there. I didn't touch anything. You sure he had a gun? Are you crazy? Of course he had a gun. Now look, you shoot a man. Then you rig up some cock and bull story about him firing at you four times. Oh, what do you mean? You said Raymond fired at you four times. Well, he did. All right. Where are the bullet holes? Well, I was right over there and he... Go ahead and look around. We've gone all over this whole room. No bullet holes. Let's go downtown, Dandy. Daddy, I'm waiting. I told you exactly what happened. Ah, I want the truth. Now, look at the facts. Man's in the hospital. He may die, and you admit you shot him. In self-defense. That's where the facts cross you up. We didn't find any gun. We didn't find any bullet holes. I've been thinking about that. The gun was loaded with blanks. What? Well, the man shot four times. The only way you can shoot a gun four times without leaving bullet holes has got to be loaded with blanks. All right, just one question. Why? I was afraid you were going to ask that. Your story gets cuter and cuter. Keep talking. You just might hang yourself. Well, it's not a bad idea, considering the company I'm in. Lay off the comedy and don't give me that blank gun routine. A guy might threaten you with a blank gun, but he wouldn't start shooting it. Now, I want some straight answers. Just what was there between you and Mrs. Raymond? She was a customer, that's all. Uh-huh. She's at the hospital right now with her husband. I spoke to her on the phone. She said you got pretty friendly with her. Well, I guess she told her husband that, too, but there was no truth in it. She also told me that one of your waiters could back her up in her story. A guy by the name of Hank Edwards. I talked to him, too. He said he busted in on you and Mrs. Raymond earlier this evening in your office, right? Oh, for crying out loud. Well, I guess it could look like that to him, but it was a business discussion. Hello. What? All right. Yeah. That was your lawyer. He's got you free for the time being. 
Well, I hate to cheat and run, but you must come down to my place sometime, Richie. Let me grill you on my barbecue. Don't get too smart. You got a high-priced lawyer, he knows all the answers. But believe me, if Raymond dies, you're gonna need more than a smart lawyer. You're gonna be up on a murder charge. Hi, Mr. Danty. I, I'm glad to see you're not in jail. Hi, Hank. Well, sure. Anything I can do to help? No, thanks, thanks. You might as well run along. Okay, good night. Good night. Uh, Hank, uh, when I left you on guard at my office door tonight, you didn't anybody in, did you? Huh? No one. Thanks. Good night. Good night. What does he mean, nobody went in the office? How'd that gun get out? If you ask me, he took it. Oh, I don't know. Certainly had a chance to, but why did he do it? Doesn't make sense. I don't know why you hired that guy in the first place. I didn't like him right off. Since when were you a good judge of people? I had him figured for trouble right away. Too bad he didn't stay in Miami. Oh, forget it. Wait a minute. I just made that coffee. Miami. Hmm? What do you mean, Hank should have stayed in Miami? Well, that's where he worked before he came up here. Sure? That's what he told me. I asked him where he got the suntan. Oh, someone else has a good suntan, too. Mrs. Raymond. She just got back from Miami two weeks ago. So? So maybe Hank has a good reason for taking the gun after all. Rita and Hank in Miami alone. <laughs> oh, Willie, you've been taken. I don't get it. I'm just beginning to myself. Lieutenant Ritchie told me that Mrs. Raymond was at the hospital with her husband. We shouldn't have any trouble. What are you talking about? Let's do some housebreaking, just like old times. Housebreaking? No, sir, oh, not me. come on now. You were breaking in houses and other kids were breaking in rattles. So I had a sordid childhood, so I reformed. Well, don't worry. If, if you go to jail, I won't forget you. Oh, no? No, no. We'll probably both share the same cell. Come on. <laughs> This is illegal. When did that ever bother you? Take a look in the bedroom. Nobody. Good, good. Look, Willie, what are we doing here? Whenever I break into a house, I like to know why. Just a little search. And, Marty, if we're lucky, we won't have it. Somebody's coming down the hall. Come on. What are you doing here? The rooms at the Y were all filled. Get out or I'll call the police. My, 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 hot chili, Monty, stir up the fire. Maybe Mrs. Raymond will thaw out. You shoot my husband, then you come to my home. What kind of a man are you? Sit down, dear. Warm yourself with the fire now. Sit right there. Monty, keep an eye on her. Which one? The good one. What are you doing? Taking inventory. You know, you surprised me, Mrs. Raymond. I figured the ever-loving wife to be at the hospital with her husband. I just left him. He's out of danger. That's too bad for you. What do you mean? Well, your plan called for your husband to die. You're not making sense. No. Didn't make any sense to me either. First, I figured Hank took the gun, but I didn't know why. Who is Hank? Now, don't act dumb with me, dear. You know who Hank is. Where'd you meet him, honey? Where else? Miami. That's right. He's young, not afraid to take a chance. Willie, what are we looking for? Ask Mrs. Raymond. Mrs. Raymond, what I'll are we... I'll have you arrested for this, both of you. Look, lady, I just came along for the ride. I... That's a proof I needed. Look at them. Blanks. Blanks? Mm. Blanks that Mrs. Raymond put in her husband's gun. That's ridiculous. It's silly. Silly for you to take a chance like this, dear. You and Hank want to get rid of your husband, so you get him drunk and tell him a lot of lies about me. Get him mad enough at me that he comes out of my office and takes a shot at me. And he don't like to get shot. You don't take any chances. Load up the gun with blanks, knowing that if someone shoots at me, I'll shoot back. Oh, I don't like being a patsy, dear. 
I'm not going to listen to any more of this. No, but I think Lieutenant Ritchie will. He's twice as stubborn as Waldo. I'll take her in. You call Ritchie and tell her to pick up Hank at home. Right. Hank isn't home, will he? I hung around your place after our talk. I figured you could stand with some watching. Don't try anything. The gun isn't filled with blanks this time. Well, looks like you win the second deal, Hank. I told you this guy was trouble. Why did you hire him, stupid? Me? Oh, no, I don't take the rappy. He was your friend. All right, drop the small talk. Yeah, that money's a drop the small talk. Yeah. Let's talk about something serious, like attempted murder. Oh, uh, uh, my favorite subject. Uh, I'll never forget the time I was an apprentice safecracker in Pasadena. Glendale. Quiet. Open the door, Rita. Let's take him outside. All right, outside. Oh, uh, can we stay here by the fire a little while? It's kind of cozy. And it's cold outside. Move. Yeah, I think he means it. Well, yeah, she was like he does. Come on, move, or I'll give it to you right here. I wouldn't want it in here, would you? I wouldn't want it any place. Move. I'm moving, I'm moving. Get over there, dear. Mind to get Richie on the phone. Tell him I got a new waiter for the prison mess hall. What's she gonna do? About 10 years. <laughs> Slept all day. So you know there's not a bad crowd. No, considering the back room's closed. Mm. No, that's what I get for trying to be a hero. Had to tell her all of the judge, huh? Yeah, even how much Mrs. Raymond lost in the gambling room. Oh, that's tough. Well, that's where it goes sometimes. Hey, Marty, good coffee. <laughs> it's about time I received my just due. <laughs> no kidding, it's hard to believe, but it's delicious. Bah. Really? Have some more. Oh, love it, love hey, it. Hey, Marty, you didn't pay me enough. Get, get out of here, will you? Come on, you're too young to be But, Marty, get lost, will you? What is this, hmm? Come on, scram, huh, kid? Honey, you didn't pay me enough. A quart of coffee costs a dollar ten. What's this about coffee? He ordered a quart of coffee from the drugstore next door, but he didn't pay me enough. Oh, uh, hi, your son. Keep the change. Gee, thanks. It's OK, it's OK, live a little. Yes, sir, Monty, this is certainly delicious coffee. Look, Willie, I, I was only... You know, I just happened to think that we're short of busboy. From now on, you're picking up the dirty ones. Smart guy. Just because you throw bullets in the fire and capture the villain. I saw Hoot Gibson do that in a Western, and he can ride a horse yet. Giddy up, boy. <laughs> 